Because I have to say, I was shocked about that and what was going on. And we decided that we would go, me and Wayne would go and meet a, a Labour minister at the time. And we asked the Labour minister, look, what the hell is going on here, man? This is serious. We're getting people charged that could go to prison for five years of their life. We are seeing our people being arrested willy-nilly, and you're attacking us left, right, centre. He said he'd go away and talk to a police uh, commissioner. And he came back, and the first thing he did when he met us, he asked us to take our batteries out of our phones. Now, it's a bit much, really, isn't it? That you meet a minister, and you're, he has to get you to take your battery out of your phone because he's scared that the state is listening in. It's a bit worrying, really, isn't it? The person who's supposed to run the state is fearful of the state that he has run. And he actually said there are two fears in the state. There's those who say they would partly argue that the state, when you take government, you control the state. He said there's people like you and the SWP that say the state is there to protect a small minority in society. He said, I have to be honest with you, the SWP is definitely right. Uh, so <laughs> that, that came from the words of the Labour Minister. Uh, but he said that he was worried because he said the Commission of Police said that, um, well, there's a problem. You've got an economic crisis coming, and it's a bit like 1928, and the left are trying to organise and grow. And really, it's a question of checks and balances. We've got to keep some checks and balances on the left. And what they're trying to say is they'd rather the fascist right group and try and weaken the left in order to do that. That's the checks and balances. The checks and balances means Wayne being threatened with five years in prison. The checks and balances are then brutalising protesters on the streets in Bolton. Their checks and balances are terrorising the Muslim community using PVE money, using police brutality and all the rest. That just will not do. And that's why you can't rely on the state when you're fighting the EDL and the fascists. You can't rely on people who killed and murdered Blair Peach, and that is now official. We should write that on every single book we ever know. It's been 30 years, his friends and families, our comrades have campaigned for justice for Blair, and finally we've got at least some justice. Some like the fact that they did kill Blair Peach, they murdered him on the streets of South, and we should never forget that. That's why you can't trust the police. You can't trust the police in 1936 when they allowed Mosley to march and allow these people to brutalise our people. So we have to rely on ourselves. But I want to say this we can't just have. The, the left, the revolutionary left in this country, fighting the right. Our central task is to resist those attacks. And let me say this, the rich can always get out of a crisis, always, if we pay for it. And we, they want us to pay for it, and it's going to be done if they get their way. The last time, the 1930s, we saw poverty, fascism, and it ended really with World War II. We can't really have that scenario this time around. So we will pay, they will make us pay if they get out of it. But it seems to me there's a couple of problems that come out from this argument about where we're going to go and how do you resist. The first is that people say to you, the Tories are invincible. But I don't really buy that. You see, there's no doubt this is a vicious, nasty, Tory liberal government. Vicious, but it's weak. You see, they often compare Cameron to Thatcher. Makes me laugh, man. Makes me laugh. My goldfish has got more anger in it than Cameron. They've got more guts in it uh, than Cameron. I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you their big danger. The big danger for them is this, that when Thatcher declared war on the working class, she took her time. They organised what was called the Vivian Plan. They took on one group of workers, then another, then another. And they salamed the working class in their little bits, and then finally went to the miners and the dockers later on, and broke them bit by bit by bit. You see, Cameron has forgotten his past, because really the last 30 years of toys, they've had it really good, they haven't seen the working class at its height. And Cameron, thinks he can come in with all his boots on at everybody, all at the same time. Now, the danger of that strategy, of course, is if he wins, it's going to be nasty. But I tell you what, we also know that we have a chance that if he takes us all on and we unite together, then we can send Cameron packing and it will be him getting on his bike and not us getting on ours. And therefore, we have to make sure we make sure that we is there and we explain that to people and have the rest of it. The second Thing really is about where we're going. Because if you join the SWP, if you're in the SWP, the first thing we guarantee is your partner fights. I think that's obvious for everyone knows. People who are going to stand up and fight. The people who are going to make sure they fight against the fascists, fight against the job cuts, defend migrant workers, stand up to those who want to bring division into our community. But I tell you what, I get the feeling, and I hope I'm not being over optimistic. I get the feeling that cracks in the dam are beginning to appear and they're getting wider with each day. Two weeks ago, David Prentice, who's not really, he's on the left in one way, but he's not really on the left for a long time. The leader of Unite, Bad Unison, the biggest union uh, in the country, said at his conference that one, he will authorise strikes if any group of workers who face cuts, and there will be a national strike of Unison if they went for their pensions. 
Interesting. Did anyone <coughs> watch the Rock Cup on the radio this morning? The government announced it's going to try and get through, par uh, through Parliament a quick new law which will allow it to cut the amount of benefit, uh, money it gives in segments paid to those workers it's sacking. Well, it's interesting, they want to sack 600,000, so they're getting their moving very quickly today. So, what we announced on the radio that they need will ballot their members to strike if they try to do this. So, we begin to see, we begin to see those at the top beginning to take some responsibility and begin to talk about the fight. But I want to say this, and I want to say this is a very serious warning. From the best to the rest of those trade union leaders, we can't leave the fight to them. If we leave the fight to them, we are fighting with one hand tied behind our backs. Because while they're making noises about fighting, you also see the fact that TUC has invited Cameron to come to the TUC Congress in September. Why? Why would you want that little scumbag coming to your conference to tell you to phone me his hotline to sack yourself? Why? Why would you want that man anywhere near your conference? Why? On Thursday night, that BA woman who spoke was brilliant. That woman is a lion, a real lion, a woman fighting to defend her friends and her colleagues and her comrades. And she said, We'll be out in August. That day, that next day rather, the union, United the Union announced that it would not be recommending a yes or a no vote. These are people that are lions and they're being led by donkeys, and it's time they started to lead these people. We can't have them to the They deserve all of you folks to come out. Why let them pick us off one at a time? That's what the Tories did in the 80s. We must learn the lessons of our defeats and make sure these things never happen again. No longer should we allow these donkeys to leave us. So we have to start to organise where they want to fight, get in behind them. But it also seems to me that we have to start to build up in the rank and file, at the grassroots level, the kind of resistance that can win. The no they never ever pull their punches. We must never ever pull our punches. Don't, if you give them an inch, they will take a mile from us. And I'll tell you, this is what I also think uh, about it. When you're in the SWP, whether you're a branch secretary, whether you're a steward, whether you're a student, whether you're an unemployed person, whether you're a, a pensioner, you know those people will be doing their best to stir up the resistance, stir up the strike, stir up the protest. And if you like that, well then you're going to love us. If you want to fight, you're going to love the SWP. And I want to make one more plea for you before I move on, which is this. It seems to me we need to start to connect those struggles together. We did it quite well, I thought, in, when we were at the Labour Party conference last year. You began to see the, the uh, windmill, uh, wind farm workers, vesters, on the, on the Isle of Wight join the protest. We saw rail workers join the protest. We saw Vistian workers come. We saw engineers. We saw civil servants. We saw students. The beginnings of bringing together a network of people who can link their struggles. There's only one place to be on the 3rd of October, and that's in Birmingham, outside the Tory Party Conference. We want everyone to be there. We want to send a very, very clear message to Amber. We 